Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. On Friday, the 7th of May, we're still in the Easter season and we're still continuing with our Jesus 100 series. So let's begin. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in this gift of a new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Now for our psalm today, which is Psalm 149. So I'll begin. Alleluia! O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timber and lyre. For the Lord has pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with salvation. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Let the faithful be joyful in glory. Let them rejoice in their ranks with the praise of God in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their king in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the judgment decreed. Such honour have all his faithful servants. Alleluia. Glorious and redeeming God, give us hearts to praise you all our days and wills to reject the world's deceits, that we may bind the evils of our age and proclaim the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we're continuing with our Jesus 100 series. Uh, today is day 80, and it's the tale of the overthrowing of the um, uh, tables in the temple. Now, today I'm going to read this in the King James, good and old-fashioned. Uh, but it's only a few verses. I think we'll all be able to cope. And they came to Jeru Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple, and began to cast them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer that any man would carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and sought how they might destroy him. For they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. Robin talks about this passage being uh, deeply political, and it is. Uh, the Gospel of Mark is a, is a radical document. It's um, really one of the only documents we have from antiquity, uh, which is told from the perspective of the common people. Obviously, most of the documents we have are from the ruling elites, the Roman Empire, because they're the ones who could write. And, um, you know, Jesus didn't spend a lot of his time kind of railing against uh, pious legalistic rules just because he didn't like them. He didn't like them because they excluded so many people 
95% um, of the people uh, living in Israel at the time were, were peasants. And so many of the rules and laws excluded them. Um, you know, um, cleanliness laws are pretty difficult to uphold when you're literally dirt poor peasant. And I think a sort of quite superficial reading of this turning over the tables is maybe, you know, like he's saying something against uh, commerce or trade. Um, but I mean, trade was part of the temple culture. Uh, it was necessary. It was a necessary part in order uh, that the laws of the Torah could be complied with. I mean, Jesus' problem with it is because all of these things led to an abuse by those in positions of power and excluded the poor. Let's not forget that he's quoting from two of the most radical prophets from Hebrew, Hebrew scriptures, Isaiah and Jeremiah, both of whom are sort of deeply committed to social justice. I think it's a pretty tough question for all of us when we actually think how our life and how our society and how our church might exclude people. It's sort of easy to sentimentalize minority groups, you know, the poor. But I think we're barely aware ourselves of the conditions that shape us. And I think a lot of the unconscious prejudices we exhibit in our day-to-day -day lives. Robin talks about clearing away the tables inside ourselves. And I think that's a really, really helpful analogy. But I think it's more than just about personal piety. It's about creating an order, seeing a world that goes past ourselves, that goes past all these factors that shape us and, ex and cause us to exclude others. Things like where we're born, which school we went to, who our parents are. And so we can see a radical new future where we have a house of prayer for everyone and where no one is excluded. So along those lines, it's time for our prayers of intercession. Lord, may we never think we prosper unless our souls prosper, or that we are rich unless rich towards others. Help us to seek first your kingdom and its righteousness. May we value things in relation to eternity rather than seek to lose ourselves in dreams lies and vanity. May we seek ourselves in your favour, your image and your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now for the collect today. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires. So by your continual help, we may bring them to good effect through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now draw our service to a close with the saying of the Lord's Prayer. Again, I'm going to do this in the old school fashion. I'm going to. I'm in a bit of an old school mood clearly today. Rejoice in God's new creation. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So, it's Friday. It's the end of the week. We really hope that you're going to be able to join us on Sunday for our usual two services. They'll be at 9, they'll be at 11. Um... It'd be really great if you could come down and join us. I'm sure you could even come and visit the goats who've decided to join me this morning as well. I hope you have a really fantastic day. Thanks ever so much for joining, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.
May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.